V-Ray's Virtual Frame Buffer is an essential tool for rendering with V-Ray. It includes the ability to save your renders to a history list, making it easy to compare their differences. Adding comments to renders in the history is also useful to remember what changes are different from render to render. Color spaces and the linear workflow are easy in the VFB. It also provides some great color correction tools that allow you to adjust and save out your render with easy to use post-processing tools without even having to leave 3ds Max. Even color profiles can be loaded into the VFB. Right-clicking your active shade render in the VFB will bring up a menu with several options. The first is Real Zoom. This moves the camera forward and back within the scene by using the mouse wheel to scroll up and down, instead of the typical behavior of zooming into the pixels of the rendered image. The next option is View Navigation, which allows you to adjust the camera's view directly in the VFB instead of having to go back to the viewport to rotate the camera around. Next is Select Object. It does, well, exactly what you think it should. Select objects directly in the VFB's rendering area to quickly access its properties. Similarly, the Get Object Material option will select the object's material in the Material Editor, making it very fast and easy to load and make changes to anything you select in the VFB. The last option requires turning on our camera's depth of field. Set Focus Distance allows us to click anywhere in our render to change the focal point. We can quickly rack from object to object with different distances from the camera to see how sharp or blurry our render gets. Now let's look at how lens effects can be interactively added in real time as the render is still being calculated. I'll open up the lens effects section of the VFB window and before I start adjusting the settings, take note that the hardware accelerated is enabled, meaning we're using the computer's GPU to add these effects to our render. Light bloom or glow is the effect you get when extremely bright areas overwhelm the camera, which creates glowing effects that extend around the light source. The added effects can be seen in the effect result channel. The RGB switch button allows us to toggle between this channel and the original RGB color pass. If I zoom into the render, you can see that the image is still progressively refining itself. Any additional adjustments to the bloom's weight, size, or shape sliders are seen in real time while the render is still calculating. The glare effect introduces the starry look that results from light passing through the camera lens and creating a flare around the light source. The weight slider controls the strength of this effect over the original image. If the glare type parameter is set to glare type from camera parameters as it is in this demo, the camera parameters section allows us to change the behavior of the camera in regard to how the glare is generated. The glare can also be created from an external file. Notice how these two HDR files change the shape of the glare. As with other interactive rendering in V-Ray, making changes to our scene, like turning on or off a light, will cause the lens effects to update as well.